It's the Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals. And these six cooks have proved themselves to be the best of the bunch. I'd love to think I could go a lot further. Done relatively well up to now, um, but it gets tougher as you go along. I have loved it and I have hated it. So when it does go right, then absolutely, it's, it's a nice feeling. I'd like to go a bit further because I certainly think I'm as good as a cook as some of the people who are still in. Now the competition moves up another notch as our cooks face their most demanding challenge yet. I've got another one with a hole in it, Brian. I'm doing my best. Just move your, your tushy tush. We're trying not to pet them. Ah! Then just one outstanding dish will stand between them and a place in the next round. One of you is leaving the competition. The six celebrities have travelled to Cambridge, home to one of the world's most famous universities, where they will face their next test. Welcome to the beautiful and historic Gonville and Keys College here in Cambridge. It has produced 12 Nobel Prize winners. It also has a reputation for producing fine food. Tonight, there is a special end-of-term dinner for the students, the parents, and some of the fellows of this college. You are going to cook for 150 people. Three courses, and that means we're going to split you into teams. The starter tonight is going to be done by Les and Shane. Main courses, aid and speech. And desserts, Janet and Brian. <laughs> You'll have only four hours in which to do it. I wish you all the best of luck. Enjoy. Off you go. Ooh. Tough geek. I'll tell you what, they better get it right. They better get it right. Gonville and Keys is one of the university's oldest colleges. Over its 650 years, it's produced world-renowned scholars, such as Sir Howard Florey, who co-discovered penicillin, and Francis Crick, who worked to establish the structure of DNA. We are fortunate in Gonville and Keys. We're used to quite a high standard of cooking. Our fellows and our guests this evening will be expecting a fine dining experience. Welcome everybody to Key's Kitchen. We're very, very busy. We've got four hours to get it ready. So, let's go. Shane and Les are responsible for the wood pigeon starter. Their first job is to debone the pigeons. You've got to be very careful. There's a lot of very tiny bones here. They're very, very sharp. Put your thumb through it and the wishbone will come clean out. Okay. I Stop. would say both of you initially Stop. start Stop. going. Get yeah, going. Yeah. So okay. this is out of the way and then we right. can concentrate okay. on the salad. Right, okay, Chef. Okay, thank you, Chef. Hey, right, let's crack on. You should aim to be about one a minute. Okay. I know it seems fast, but it will. Okay. I grew up doing a bit of hunting with my father. I'm good at an animal or two. I've done a fair few pheasant and rabbit in my day. Never went hunting, not in working class Liverpool. There was, there was no, nowhere to go hunting. As long as every piece of that wishbone is out, we don't want any customers to get a sharp piece in the mouth. We're going to have to work very, very quickly. So, teamwork, that's what it's all about. First course at 7.15. I'd start panicking now if I was them. Speech and aid are on the main course. Roasted lamb rump. All that? Aid has to remove the fat membrane on all 150 portions. I think this is going to annoy the life out of me. <laughs> it's absolutely excruciatingly dull. Come on. I bet it's hit home now, now they've seen the amount of food they've got to prepare. 150 lamb rumps, that's tough. Oh, look at that one. In one piece. One piece. I've got to prep 
of vegetables for the dish. Right now, I'm doing the uh, aubergine. Then I've got to do courgettes, tomatoes, sweet peppers as well. I find chopping vegetables quite therapeutic, so it's all right. I've usually got a bit of music playing, but hey. Once it's char grilled, it's going to sit in that ring, so okay. these are way too big. Okay. Janet and Brian are making dessert. A tweel basket filled with passion fruit mousse, served with a raspberry coulis, and topped with a sugar basket garnished with a mint leaf. Does this mean anything? Doesn't mean anything. I thought it was a secret symbol or no, something. No, 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 it's secret not a symbol of the college. No, no. We're going to start with the paste for the twill biscuit. We've definitely been given the hardest course. We have by miles. The dessert is complicated, it's complex, it's fussy. I've never ever cooked anything even approximating that because that represents everything I hate in culinary terms. How are you feeling, Brian? I'm hopeless at desserts. I really don't do desserts at all, so I've never done a twill. Twill? A twill. I've never done one of those. I've eaten one, but I've never cooked one. Yes. The twill mixture is made by blending together egg whites, butter, flour and icing sugar. There's the paste. So that's what you need to do. That's what we're trying to achieve. OK, you want to come and try? All right, I'll have a go. Do some more. So I put it on the top. Put it on the top, put a dog, and then turn the pallet over. Take it over to the oven. They will go very quickly. You won't believe how fast it will go. And you have to work really, really quickly. This is the hardest part, the biscuits. God, you're, going, you're getting me anxious. The twill must be perfectly cooked, or Janet won't be able to form the basket. <laughs> OK, bring it over. Hands round it, on the side. Oh, it's hot! Pan. Yeah, it's all right, go on. Oh, class, uh, class bit. Class bit, it's boiling! OK, if it sticks in the mould, just put your hand in the mould, pop it out. Well, Four. OK, we're on the way. Four. That's only 146 to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been punished by being put in here. Yeah, we, we could be here for some time. You're a historian. You're not reading a novel, you're reading a source. What's, what are the key analytical things you need to worry about? You've got different perspectives. You need to put the two sorts together if you're going to come mm -hmm. to something akin to, to what really happened. 45 minutes into prep, and Shane and Les are still boning out the pigeons. I'd say we're about halfway now. We're on time. Come off, little bird. Maybe that's it. I've got to start talking to them. I like Les' style, you know? It's kind of like me, man. He's a bit chilled out and thinks about things, and that's the right way to go about it. They're doing well. They're doing well. You're on, you're on time. Shane, I think, is so calm, so lovely in his attitude to his teammate. He's a diamond. On a roll. On a roll, that's good. Good. <laughs> Do you both understand the dish? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Just preparing these first. I think they only go in the last minute. These come out of the oven, yeah. they rest, and then when you go to service, they've got to come off the bone while they're still hot, sliced, and then put on top of the salad to be served. But it does mean it comes service time, you've still got to be... Yeah, you can be honest, yeah, yeah. Time. Time. Yeah. What is worrying me, and I think what is playing on their mind, is the fact they can't actually start cooking those pigeons until there's 20 minutes to go. So it's going to get red hot when it comes to service. Making the best off the bone is going to be mental. I oh, know. Speech is still prepping the vegetables, which are to be char-grilled and served with the lamb. One lot of vegetables down, now about six more. I don't know. It's a pile of veg to get prepped. I'm just working through it and not trying to think too much about how much of it there actually is. I've never been frightened by piles of lamb. I'm not about to start now. Oh, oh, I love it when it comes off in one piece. That's a boon. You're way beyond aid on this lamb. I don't know how to go any faster. Is this, the first, is this the first tray? Yeah. And I can't go any faster than I'm going. Safely. Yeah. There's six there. All right. You've got to keep an eye on them. Elsewhere in the kitchen, there's more cause for concern. You've got 30 twills made. You're a fifth of the way. We really need to speed up now. 
Yeah, quick as you can. Carefully, don't be afraid of it. It's only a biscuit. There you go. Next one out. I've zoned out. I'm in Tweel world. Yes. We're in Tweel world. We're not doing badly. It'll probably get a little bit stressed as time goes on. There's no point in getting stressed. No. It's not a United Nations peace negotiation, exactly. is exactly. it? Exactly. It's just, just food. Just waiting to And we'll, we'll remain calm and focused. Who put this one in? It's got a hole in it. Oh, that was probably that horrible guy. Um, what's his name? Brian. Brian? Yeah. We've only got about another 100 to do. I think, Brian, when you did this tray, you were having a little turn, weren't you? I'm doing my best. Guys, what have you got to do? We've got to mould these, fill them with some fruit mousse stuff... Yes. ..and then stick some cobwebby thing over the top and then make a fashion statement with red blobs on the plate. Oh, look, I can see that, Janet. I'm not blind. I'm saying, what have you got to do as far as your workload goes? Have you made the mousse, for instance? We haven't got that far yet. So the only thing you've done is the twills? What do you mean, the only? Don't belittle what I've done so far. I'm not belittling it. I'm just stating a fact. You couldn't do this any quicker. We've got cages to make, we've got mousse to make. Pick the pick off the mint. Good luck. Okay. I've got another one with a hole in it, Brian. Sounds like Janet's having a nice time. <laughs> An hour and a half in, and Shane and Les have finished prepping the pigeons. We now just have to get on with the salad. A lot of chopping to do. Once you see this amount of butternut squash, are you suddenly realising the scale? The scale, and I think this is probably the toughest vegetable to prepare. It's a kind of kick to think that you might be feeding somebody who goes on to win the Nobel Prize for Literature, and that one day they might come up to you and say, I tasted your wood pigeon salad and went on to be the greatest novelist in the world. If me and Les are late, then the whole dinner is late. And we really don't want that to happen. So, trying to crack on. I think we're doing OK. Um, nobody's come up and screamed at us to say we should be further on. How much more you got to do? Um, what all of those. Yeah, oh, have you started the beetroot yet? No. Oh. What? You haven't started the beetroot yet? No. Do we need to think, one of us think about beetroot, or should we just both carry on with this? I would think just move your, your tushy tush. OK. OK. Having finished the veg prep, Speech is now char grilling the aubergines and courgettes for the vegetable stack. It's taking a long time. It's going to be hot for me. really hot. <laughs> it's just all of this area, all round here, it's just, even when you get your hand near it, it's hot. Are you still lambing? I still am, yes. Have you um, stopped at all? Have you done something else? No, or... I haven't done anything else. So how many have you got, how many have you done, do you think? I've done, I think I've done 90-something. I'm nearly up to 100. So you've been doing that for about two hours? It might be on the rare side. And how's speech going on? I've no idea. No idea? I, I haven't lifted my head. This is the aid and speech method of working, is it? Speech? you cooking everything else? I don't think so. I'm just doing the aubergines. Are you still cooking the aubergines you cut up ages ago? Yes, but I also cut up courgettes and red peppers oh, okay. and started the sauce. OK, so we're doing all right. Are we? Well, you are, except there's still potatoes to be done. Oh, yeah. You've still got 30, 40 to do. I'm going to have to move you on to, the, to get the potatoes done. If not, we're, go we're going to be really well behind. Right, OK. OK? One of my lads will have to just take over on this. 150 potatoes. You've come off the lamb? I have. I'm a bit annoyed to have come off the lamb. I wanted to finish the task, you know. It felt like I've... I'd let my lamb down. Are you going to get this out on time? I literally have no idea. 
Speech and aid aren't the best team. The left hand doesn't really know what the right hand's doing. We've just got to hope it comes together, and I mean hope. That's it, just get another mould in, Brian. Janet and Brian have now been making twill baskets for almost three hours. How many got left to go? I don't know, I've lost the plot. We've still got sugar cages to make, still got the moose to make. A lot of work to do still. We have an hour and five minutes to service. OK, any second I'm going to have to take one of you off these twills and start on the moose, because we really do need to get this moose underway. I'll start you on the moose, Brian. Yeah. Oh, no, I yeah. like doing moose! And I'll leave Janet on the twills. Oh, okay. no, what have I done to upset you, Tone? He's not done anything to upset me, we're just not working fast enough. Now, fold that in carefully. I am worried, because the time is ticking away. Into the fridge now. You've got 15 to go. 15? How many more do I need to do? Do three more trays to make sure. That's it, that's the last one. I feel like I'm in an operating theatre. It's 6.30 and the guests are arriving for a pre-dinner drinks reception. Tonight's quite a special occasion. Our students have brought their parents with them. It would be great if it could be a special, exciting meal, something people will be talking about in the weeks and months to come. I have got high expectations of um, what the food's going to be like, yes. Normally on formal occasions, the food is of a really high standard, so we'll see tonight. I can never remember in this college that dinner was served late, and I certainly hope it won't happen tonight. We're 50 minutes away from service. We're confident we're doing as fast as we can, without a shadow of a doubt. Shane and Les are finishing off the salad for the starter, but with service fast approaching, they still have the mammoth task of cooking the 150 portions of pigeon. We've got a lot to do still, don't mind that. We're trying not to panic. Last bit, we're going to get the pigeon in. They're going to put the lettuce and the beetroot and the pumpkin on the plates. That can go upstairs. And then when it's done, the roast pigeon will go upstairs as well, and the whole thing will be finished up top. So that's 33. You're going to do that five times. Right. OK, Shane, we need to start doing the pigeon. Leave layers on the salad. We need to seal it off six minutes in the oven. We really need to move now, so we're running it. I have a few boards in here. I'm used to a few boards, you know what I mean? I think this is 35 here, so uh, it's not even a third of the way through. We're up against it. Right down the bottom, right down the bottom. No, 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 on the, on the things. Yeah, go on. On the things, they sit. One, only 149 to go. Two, 148. Three, one, four, seven. I've got to pour it. Now that service is about to begin, Brian has to get the chocolate decorations ready for dessert. While Janet's under pressure to make 150 sugar cages. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry. That's all right. Tone, okay. that could be all right. No, it's no good. Why? Don't break it. It's no good. What? No good. Try again. Tone, how did you get it off? How did you do it? I can't do this. It's too impossible. Can I swap? I bet carry on with this. Take me a bit of time to get the hang of this. Brian won't swap. I've been to art school. I've studied architecture. This is what I do. 
I don't want to do the sugar. I've got no sugar aptitude. I'm so wanting to take over, but I've decided to be his handmaiden. <laughs> because anything rather than do the sugar. It's not an option. We have to have sugar baskets. It's on the menu and we promised them, so it has to be ready. Et donis tuis, qua ex lagitate tua sumus sumturi. Shane, yes, push it. Tom, we've got to go. Back to the cannon ship. Sei calestis nos participes facias. Rex aeternae gloriae. Amen. Amen. Pigeon. Yes, sir. Last pigeon, sir. These are going to go in. Top bottom. Top bottom. Okay. We're going to help Les on the salads just now, and then we'll start preparing the pigeon. At an event this big, the real challenge for the celebrities is not just the cooking, but plating up 150 identical dishes. So that's 99. How's it going over there? Yeah. Uh, pigeon's in. 26. Good. Right, there we go. Right, let's go. Keep them going. They're behind, but they're not that far behind. Ten minutes. Bring them in in ten minutes and we're ready. We're just carving the pigeon. Shane, how long? Yeah, how long, just how long before you start taking them off the bone? I'm just going to take them off the bone. Just having a look now. They're a little bit under. A bit under? A little bit under. Right, put them in this oven now. What's happened? Pigeon is still a bit under. The what? The pigeon is still a bit under. How, mu how much longer? Five minutes. We're over 100 now. 100 plates surveyed. The starter is now due to go out. Whoa! But Les is still plating up the salads, and Shane is still carving the pigeon breasts. Ready? No, no you're lying. Ten minutes. Ten minutes for the for the yeah. Just give me ten minutes. Ten minutes. I've delayed the dinner for ten minutes. It's the first time we've been late. On the pressure now. Les, as soon as these are done. Yeah. Upstairs, you need to get them into the lift. Close the door. Hey guys, we're gonna have to delay the dinner for fifteen minutes because you're way behind. Come on, mate, let's go. Five minutes. Five minutes. OK. So five minutes from now, yeah? Go up and start serving. Go, Shane. Right, Shane, up this way. Okay, let's go. So we just have to serve the wine. Give, wine. Okay. Give extra yeah. wine if you have to. The dishes must now be finished with the pigeon and the dressing. One year we'll put the pigeon on and one we'll do the dress the salad, yeah? OK. OK, let's go. Over the top, the pi... Oh. We're moving. Shane and Les's starter is warm breast of wood pigeon served on a salad of butternut squash, beetroot, and a walnut oil dressing. Delicious. Beautifully served. Wood pigeon was very tender, a little bit pink for me. The wood pigeon was lovely. Uh, the meat was very tender, very soft. Generally, yeah, very tasty. Very good job. Go round, round this way. You right, Shane? Yes, sir. More exciting than dancing on a stage, eh? Tell you what, I've never moved to much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my stool when I need it, eh? I don't know who's done your choreography for this, mate, but it's bang on. <laughs> you do one right-handed, one left-handed, Liz. Uh, oh, you do one in each hand like a gunslinger. <laughs> Go, Liz! 
Yes, go on, son. Go on. The Woodbridge Inn was very, very nice, lovely. We're rocking now. That looks lovely. Absolutely lovely. Good going, lads. I enjoyed my pigeon so much that I actually stole the remaining pigeon from my neighbour's plate. It was absolutely delicious. That pigeon is flying out. Hey, mate. <laughs> Give us a hug. Well done, mate. Good job, mate. Good job. I think this starter was easily up to the standards of what we'd normally have here. The pigeon was nice, the flavouring was really good, the seasoning was good, I thought, yeah. I'm looking forward to the main course. The lamb looks really delicious, so um, fingers crossed, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my happy job to welcome the parents who are here this evening. You might get the idea that all we do here is eat splendid meals in a noble hall. <laughs> but you have to think of us during the day. Students and dons alike dispersed in our specialised departments. And it's dinner that brings the whole community together. Now it's up to speech to cook the lamb. You need to really speed up now. While Aid finishes the vegetable stacks. But you need to really fly now. All the aubergine, and then all the kosher, then the tomatoes. Lost five minutes, and you're in the company of good friends up there. They'll be having all sorts of intellectual discussions, probably one of which will lead to a Nobel Prize. There's a whole lot of lamb in here right now. I know that much. Looks great, guys. I think you could be blessed by the fact that the starters were late and somebody wants to say a speech. When you visit Gonville and Keys on an occasion like this, or when you return on that splendid occasion when your sons and daughters graduate... Ten minutes for the main course. Are we serving the food? Yeah. <laughs> speech will be here. Yeah. And you will be here. Oh, I see. But plating the main is more demanding than the starter, as it has five different elements. You ready to go? The roast rump of lamb, a char-grilled vegetable stack topped with spinach, a roast potato, and a red wine sauce. Looking really good. All that hard work, look, great food, great food. I'd be happy if I was out there. I've never seen lamb move so fast. Come on! I thought the lamb was delicious. I, I really enjoyed it. Flavour combination worked well. Uh, very enjoyable. This place is hot, aren't they? Almost there, almost there. Well done. What happened then? <laughs> what happened then? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's I just kind mad, of blacked out. It? it just happened. Yeah. <sighs> Looking forward to dessert. It's going to be a nice, nice end to a lovely meal. <laughs> Janet, Brian, the mains have gone. Right, so we're looking at 20 minutes now. Start on the coonie now. Yep. Take one off, finish it, back on. Ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. Guys, you're doing really well. That's still looking really nice. 34, 35, 36, 150 twill baskets, 150 sugar baskets, a mousse. All the words that Janet would never usually use in her vocabulary unless it was swearing at me. I'm very unlikely to reappear in my vocabulary again. 80, 82, 84, 86, 88. 
I'm struggling to retain my sanity. OK, come on, we're home run now. 50, 150. That's the last lot. We can start to clear, yeah? Yes, please. OK, thank you. Johnny, Brian, go upstairs okay. to serve it. Start serving. And you got all the baskets to go up, and you got all the mint to go up. <laughs> I must have walked 500 miles today. Right, here we go. We're waiting for the mint. We can't start without the mint. Is it on there? Where's the mint? Run it up the stairs if necessary. Just the mint, bring it up. Why can't we just start without the mint? So a few no, people we're not we don't start. know. We've got we're we're we've got... I don't even wait. know what it's in the first place. We've got Where's 80 odd the of these mint? down there. Just sharp. Here we go, we'll go. Wonders a cage, wonders a mint. Come on, you gotta go, you gotta go quicker. Let's get him out. Janet and Brian's dessert is a tweel basket filled with passion fruit mousse, served with a raspberry coulis and topped with a sugar basket garnished with a mint leaf. This was fancy, and I came to Cambridge to be fancy. Wow. I thought the dessert was awesome. It was absolutely delicious. It was a crime to eat this. It's so pretty, but I can't stop myself. The pudding was really good. I especially like the sugar on the top. I'd love to know how the chefs did it. Let's go. The pudding was particularly delicious. I like the sponge sugar on the top of the twill uh, basket. That was lovely. Next one. We're very close now. Excellent, Brian. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you, Janet. You. Excellent. The final course was a splendid end to the meal. I am very impressed with what the chefs have achieved tonight. I think this has been a great end to the evening. It really impressed me. It looked fantastic. Really good. What did they say? Well, they said it's the best part of the evening, the best meal. The best have. bit of the meal? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was the best one, I think. So it was the best, the oh, best the part of the meal? Well, well thank, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long day for our six celebs, long day for you and I, but actually, they haven't done a bad job at all. 450 plates of food, a grand dining room and six celebs. Who thought that was possible? It was epic, back's pretty much shot, but actually, I'm still smiling. I really enjoyed it. An absolutely exhausting day. I've never worked like this in my life, you know? I get on great with Janet. She's such a character. She's so funny and witty and dry sometimes. You can't help but just crack up. I don't really like food that's got all the squiggles on the plate. I'm never going to serve sponge sugar. I think I might just be in the middle of a heart attack. That's how it feels like. <sighs> My feet hurt. I'm definitely tired. It's been a good evening. Ready to go to bed now. This is the toughest test that we've put in front of our six celebs so far. One more to go, then one of them's going to leave the competition. That last challenge was really tough. But now it's your chance to demonstrate to us what food really means to you. 
We believe great food to be about passion and love. And what we want from you is a dish inspired by somebody that you love and you respect. At the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, your one dish, one hour and 15 minutes, let's cook. We've got a pudding from you, Abe. It's pears poached in red wine and cinnamon ice cream. Good. But I'm, I'm making it for my grandson. I recently became a grandfather. You're a granddad? Yes. Congratulations. Yes. And he's the sort of apple of everyone's eye in our family. And he's seven months. He's called Freddy. And he's just started eating solids. And the thing he really likes is pears. Good lad. So I'm just I'm using that as inspiration, really. I mean, this is going to have a slightly more adult flavour because it's, it's, you know, it's got quite a lot of spice in it. Well, also, I noticed a large bottle of red wine, of which most of it's now in a pot. Not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Aid has got spiced poached pears and he's got a cinnamon ice cream. Lovely. See, they say a watch pot never boils, but this one is boiling. I'm kind of hoping that today's is foolproof. I can't think what could really go wrong. I don't know. I mean, can pears be different from one day to the next? Pear could fall to bits. I hadn't thought of that. That's worrying now. You've had 20 minutes. Brian, tell me what you're actually cooking. It's venison in a harissa spice with vinegared carrot, with some broccoli and, and some chips. Well, it's a kind of a fusion. My real father was a French Algerian, and um, as he was killed in an air crash, when I was a baby, so I never knew him at all. And when I was in my 20s, I remember talking to one uncle in particular, and I said, what was my dad like? And he said, well, you know what? He was always in the kitchen, and he loved cooking. That's one of the strongest things that I know about him. The inspiration for Brian's dish, I think, is absolutely incredible. It's really important that I do get through today. I'd love to get through as a kind of tribute to the father that I didn't know. My wife is my inspiration for this dish because I don't feed myself. She's the one that keeps me alive. I just have to say thanks for keeping me alive, really. It's hardly anything on your bench at all, Shane. Is this right? Basically making a soup, which is called a winter warmer. This is basically what keeps me going during the winter. Before music, which a lot of people don't know, is uh, I drove a lot of stock cars, got into the band Boy Zone, travelled the world, I went back to race cars and I've been driving ever since, pretty much. Most days and nights I spend in a cold garage working on race cars. So to kind of keep me going through those days and nights, my wife always makes me a soup with a big load of bread, pretty much, because I don't eat, I never eat. So if she doesn't feed me, I die. Shane's making bread with yeast in it. He's got to let it prove and then he's got to bake it. Now, in an hour and 15 minutes, it's going to be touch and go. I know I'm under pressure for time. Massively. You are halfway. So what are you going to cook for us, Speech? It is spicy grilled vegetables with Callaloo and coconut risotto, butternut squash emulsion and a beetroot sauce. And Callaloo is what? It's used in Jamaica, but it pretty much tastes like spinach. This dish is inspired by who? My best mate, Laura. She's been a vegetarian for about two years, and this is the dish that I made for her um, the last time she came round, and I had some risotto in the cupboard, and I had a tin of Callaloo. So you invented it? Yeah. Great. Speech's dish is something she's invented herself for a vegetarian friend, and I love vegetarian food. We've always had a bond through food. Because of her, I've had to learn how to cook uh, vegetarian food and try to make it interesting and tasty for me. She's got a clue, which is like a spinach or a Swiss chard risotto. 
Then she's got a beetroot sauce, a butternut squash emulsion, and then a stack of vegetables. It could be amazing. It could be quite bizarre. I'm hoping for amazing. You've got 25 minutes left. I was asked to cook something for my favourite person, the person I respect, the person that, you know, inspires me. Me. No, you're kidding. No, I have chosen my favourite dish and I'm cooking it for me. I'm cooking fish pie. Yay! Yes! Yippee dango! Fish pie. I like fishing. I've made this pie with fish that I've caught. I caught a big pollock in Scotland, brought it back to London, made fish pie. It's oh. what I eat when I've had a really, really hard day. I love it. What's special about this fish pie is everything about it is the way I want it to please me. I haven't got to please anyone else. It's inspired by me. It's for me. Hurrah. Only Janet could come on here doing a dish from somebody she loves and respects and it ends up being herself. Only Janet. You have just 15 minutes left. Les, what are you going to cook for us? Rice pudding. And it's inspired by my mum and dad. When I was a kid growing up in Liverpool, every week we would always have a rice pudding. And it was my dad's rice pudding. He loved his rice pudding. When I was about 20, um, I took him for a Chinese. Um, I was trying to show him different foods. And he went, you can't have rice with your dinner. It's a bloody pudding. So that story has always stayed with me and I love it. So I'm doing vanilla rice pudding, then a mojito shot. Ah! <laughs> so you're trying to get us drunk so we like yeah, the pudding less. Yeah. Well, in my mum's day, it would, she'd have had a, an Advocar, you know, or a baby sham. So I think now I would have got her onto the mojitos. Les is doing rice pudding that his mum and dad used to love on a Sunday afternoon. It's a dish from his heart, it's a dish full of memories for him, but he knows it needs smartening up. So he's adding a rhubarb compote, crystallised mint leaves and a shortbread biscuit. Good on Les. If he manages to pull off all those things, it'd be a cracking dish. Rice pudding, I hope, is not too homely. I'm trying to bring it into the 21st century. I've added some mascarpone. My dad wouldn't have known what mascarpone is. What's that? It's cheese, Dad. It's soft cheese. You can't put cheese in a rice pudding. Five minutes left, guys. Five minutes. I'm really happy about what's going on in this kitchen. Do you know why? We've got good cooks cooking food that they really honestly believe in, and it's wonderful. You worry about the ice cream, what, not, not churning? Well, I wonder if I've got the right quantities in. Oh, don't I don't say that now, I Don't I say know. that now. They said they wanted it adult. Just one minute. That's it. It's over. It's all over. Inspired by his parents, 
Les has made vanilla rice pudding with mascarpone, rhubarb compote, shortbread biscuits, sugared mint leaves, and a mojito shot. Love the flavour of the rice pudding, cinnamon and vanilla. Like the rhubarb against it because it's slightly sweetened, it's still a little bit sharp, and you need that with the thick pudding. Flavours I love, very comforting, very cosy. Thank you. The combination of sugared mint, sour rhubarb, and that creamy rice pudding with the nutmeg, I think is a lovely, lovely thing. Love it, Les. Thank you. I'm delighted, absolutely delighted to get you guys to say what you said. Well, I didn't get you to do it. You, you did it. <laughs> you uh... were... It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm really thrilled. Thank you very much. I feel really good. Yeah, I feel like I've got a good school report. <laughs> Inspired by his grandson, Freddy, Aid has made a pear poached in red wine, cinnamon and cloves with a red wine syrup and a cinnamon ice cream. Lovely looking pear, lovely shine on your syrup. Shame about your ice cream. I failed. I'm bitterly disappointed, if I have to say. I just think it's rubbish, isn't it? To uh, promise ice cream and not give it, it's just kind of... Oh, nicely poached. Your pear is poached beautifully all the way through. I like the thick finish of your sauce, reduced really, really well. I like it a lot. I like your ambition, and I like the precise presentation. Thank you. You get the slight bitterness that comes with red wine. That goes into warming spices. That goes into what I can only describe as a cuddle flavour of cinnamon. I think we are an ice cream away from are an absolute triumph. I think if the ice cream was set, I would have been a dead cert to go through. Really delicious, though. It was fantastic. It's the best thing I've made. Inspired by herself, Janet has made fish pie with petit pois à la française and samphire. I think the depth of flavour inside that fish pie is absolutely brilliant. I love the fact you made the stock. It's really rich, it's really opulent. It's scattered with scallops and prawns and smoked fish. I think that's a beautifully made fish pie, and I really like the fact you've got these wonderful plates out. I think it's brilliant. Thank you. Love the flavours. French peas I love. You've got that slight tang of onion and you've got sweet peas, loads of butter, seasoning, good. You go through the soft mashed potato that is without lump. You get beautifully cooked fish underneath. You get another big load of seasoning. Very Moorish, very nice. The sort of home comfort food that you are absolutely brilliant at. Still think your food needs a little bit of smartening up. I'm sorry. I'm really pleased. Of course, they couldn't stop themselves making a couple of snidey comments about the dribbles down the side of the basin, but honestly, they're clutching at straws. Shane has made a sweet potato and butternut squash soup with onion, garlic and chilli and a bread roll, which is inspired by his wife. Shane, I've got to say, this stage of the competition, that better be a blooming good bowl of soup and a very good bread roll. Believe me, you'll like it. That's impressive. Yeast bread, hour and 15 minutes. Good on you. I think your soup's made really well. It's lovely and thick. The texture is wonderful and velvety. There is the sweetness of the sweet potato, the richness of the butternut squash, and the spice of the chilli sitting all the way through it. I like it. Okay. That could well be the best butternut squash soup I've ever tasted. That is lovely. It's sweet, it then becomes spicy, tangy, it ends in pepper bitter, and I think it's fabulous. Your bread rolls light, nice. Good job, mate. I'm very, very pleased. Everything I set out to do with that dish, I completed. And it was spot on. It was a bang on bit of soup and bread. 
Brian has made venison with harissa on a bed of mashed potato with Algerian carrots, game chips, broccoli, and a red wine sauce, inspired by his French Algerian father. Love the venison with that harissa. Absolutely love it on a bed of creamy potato. I really, really like it. I love those carrots, sharp with vinegar and tasting the cumin. Next time I visit Algeria, I'm going to ask for carrots because I think those carrots are, are, are stunningly good. I love the smokiness of your venison with your creamy mashed potato. Technically, your cooking is brilliant. Your, your flavours, though, are just too confused. There's too much on a plate. You got promise, just need to stand back a bit. I just complicate it. I thought it was quite a simple dish, and then suddenly I made, a, I made some bad decisions. I thought their comments were more than fair because I was expecting a complete drubbing. But I really need to seriously think about simplifying things, yes. Speech has made spicy char-grilled vegetables with a callaloo and coconut risotto, a butternut squash emulsion, and a beetroot and chili sauce which is inspired by her vegetarian best friend, Laura. I think there's parts of this which are really tasty. I like the sour, sharp saltiness of that clue rice. But to me, it seems like it's a side dish for something else. And that something else shouldn't be that vegetable stack because they are miles apart. I like the butternut squash sauce. I think it's very, very sweet and very rich. I really like your beetroot sauce, which is really spicy and really sweet and very, very earthy. But I don't see how it all comes together as a dish. OK. Really like the aubergine and pepper stack with lots of olive oil and courgettes in there. It's juicy. Love those little sauces. There's nowhere near enough of them to make an impact on the dish. A real mixed bag. I'm going to stand by the dish. I think I cook like I make music. I don't really know where I'm going to go, but I kind of just follow the feeling. Yeah, food and music are, are very similar the way I do it. Really nice seeing you cooking dishes inspired by loved ones. It, it was lovely. And at times, uh, emotional. One of you will be leaving the competition We've got to decide who. Thank you very much indeed. Off you go. <laughs> Today was about emotion, about love, and about food with, with feeling. My favourite dish today, I think it was Shane's. The plate looked lovely, the bread was light, and the soup was delicious. That was my favourite. So I think Shane did a brilliant job. My favourite dish today? And this is going to surprise you. Les Dennis. Les Dennis. Les Dennis! Rhubarb and rice pudding. Good dish, you know. So, so impressed with Les. You know why? Because he is fighting tooth and claw to stay in this competition. And he's producing some good food, our Les. A he had a perfectly poached pear and a really nice spiced syrup as well. With ice cream, it would have been absolutely outstanding. But actually a very, very good dish indeed. And I eat the whole lot. And for me to eat a whole pudding, that's got to be a pretty good one. Janet made a very nice fish pie, really richly flavoured. Just make it a bit more sexy. A little bit of a wipe around your bowl, if you don't mind, Janet. I don't think that I'll be going home, but it's not a very nice feeling. But you know what? I've been sacked from loads of stuff in my career and I made loads of programmes that nobody even remembers. So, you know, it's only cooking. You know, you're not inventing a vaccine for polio. I wondered how speech was going to get all of those different vegetables onto one plate. I liked the Mediterranean vegetable stack. I liked the little sauces she made, but they were just dots. Real up and down from speech today. I think that we had three different ideas on one plate. It was weird. If I hear them out, I might very well storm off, cos I'm just like that. I'm a bit of a brat. Um, my mum would not be proud of that. <laughs> Brian? Oh. I tell you what, for me, the great thing about that dish was that venison's big and gutsy and it's full of flavour. Brian has got some nice ideas, but he doesn't know when to stop. He just keeps chucking things at a dish. 
whether I've done enough to get through to the next round, I think this is the closest I've thought, oh, I could be on my way out, perhaps. Um, I hope I've done enough. We know how good these cooks are. I've got to say, there's certain cooks who have edged their way, they stay without question. One will be leaving the competition. OK, who's going to be? Unfortunately, one of you is leaving the competition. The person leaving us is Speech. Thank you, Speech. Thank you so much. I'm feeling gutted that I'm leaving MasterChef. I am going home. I'm out of the game. Of course, I'm disappointed. But it's been a great experience. And then there were five. <laughs> wow. wow, you and me. <laughs> Mightily relieved. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd get this far in the competition. I'm really close. I don't look happy, but that's the way I am. The more I go on, the more I'm getting confident. So I'm really absolutely thrilled. <laughs> it's a shock, really. I was completely prepared. I was getting my face ready <laughs> for a magnanimous loser. Today, without a shadow of a doubt, it was a great day, it was a perfect day. I'm still here, man, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, fight, I'm fighting fits off. Next time, the final five come face to face with the harshest of critics. This bit of the competition now gets brutal. I've been persuaded to put the risotto in a ring. I know! Ooh. Come my You're not going to try and balance that. Oh. I think this is just a couple of notches down from brilliant. Sweet potato fondant, an abomination. And if they don't perform, they are out. <laughs> <laughs>